Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. As you can hear, I still have a cold. I never get sick. Um, Alright guys, I've gotten a whole lot of response, and some of it has been negative, regarding the topic of seceding from the Union. It's official today. All 50 states have petitions in regarding seceding from the Union. First of all, those of you that watch this show uh, deserve to know what I'm thinking on the topic, and then I'm going to get to what some other people are thinking on the topic. But I, I want to make sure uh, if someone does disagree with me, which is fine, um, they know why, or they at least know what, what it is that I believe. First of all, I wouldn't be in favor of seceding from the Union unless I had some idea what the Constitution was that I was going to. For instance, if New York City under Bloomberg seceded from the Union, like New York as a state, then that insanity would be going on in, let's, I'm assuming the capital of New York, the country of New York, would be New York City. The Capitol would have the most draconian laws regarding how big of a pop you can have. They can stop you on the street for no reason and search you. No, if that's what we're seceding into, then I'll just stay where I'm at. If New Hampshire was to leave the Union and they became a very libertarian-leaning, constitutionalist state of its own. I would think about it. I would think about it. I mean, it's clear that our leaders on, on either side aren't really hearing us. The only people that are hearing anybody at all is the people that are begging for things free from the government and whoever promises to give that to them then that's who they like but let's factor those people out because those people what, what, what can you say about your average Lady Gaga fan um, let's factor those people out in terms of policy neither side is hearing us and I'm not violent. I don't condone violence. I would not be in favor of secession that led to civil war. What I'm happy about in all of this, what I'm delighted about, is that this may let our leaders know just how unhappy we are. I'd love to know how many Obama votes chose to sign the secession uh, request, petition. Um, have I signed it? No. Do I intend to? Probably not. Why? Like I just said, I, what is the Constitution that I'm going into? And this right now has as much chance of happening as uh, Kim Basinger does jumping through this window and uh, looking for Batman to... Uh, to pick a ra random movie that I've seen recently. Alright, look. Let's hope our leaders listen to us so that we do not have to secede from the Union. Or even talk about it anymore, because it's dreadful. Having said that, I am glad that there are people saying that there are alternatives here if people continue to not listen to us. And those do not involve blowing things up. They involve leaving. Um, three myths about secession. Ryan W. McMacken, Lee Rockwell blog. Myths. Three things that are not true about secession. One, the Constitution does not prohibit secession. Wrong. The legal, the legal argument boils down to this. One, the Constitution does not men mention secession in any way. Two, the Tenth Amendment says the powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution nor prohibited by it to the states are reserved to the states respectively. 
or to the people. He goes on. Now, I don't have to have a PhD in logic, but even I can figure out that if something is not mentioned, then according to the Tenth Amendment, it isn't prohibited to the states. In fact, it is the opposite of prohibited. I love how he writes. Now, I know that the Supreme Court says no secession is allowed, which means that the federal government has declared that you cannot escape the federal government. Gee, that's no shocker. So sure, if you believe that the federal government should be the last word on what the federal government can and cannot do, then that's fine. Just don't pretend to have a constitutional government. If the federal government gets to decide what the Constitution says, then the Constitution is nothing more than a suggestion box for the feds. And I'm going to read a little bit of this one. You, you our regular listeners know that I don't spend a whole lot of time reading off screens, but I gave you my opinion at the beginning. Some, uh, some good writing here. The Civil War did not settle the issue. Well, it settled the issue in the way that I settled the matter of ownership of Steve Garvey baseball card when I beat up the other kid and took it. Okay, that never happened, but you get my point. Secession was never settled beyond the federal government's assertion. That was the right of the people to try to exercise their rights protected by the Tenth Amendment. Very much so. And the other thing that I am not in favor of is leaving for any reason that has anything to do with race. I do not give a damn about someone's color. That means nothing to me. Obama is a terrible president because of his policies, not because of the color of his skin. Um, I make that very clear. So any references to the Civil War, uh, I want to make very clear where I stand on that. Um, Secession is treason, un-American, crazy, for slavers only. Prior to the Confederacy, there were some slave owners who got together and seceded from their government. They were called Thomas Jefferson and George Washington. It goes on. If you're opposed to the secession of 1776, then that's fine. You might be consistent on the issue. But if you're one of those right-wing pundits who thinks that the Declaration of Independence should be read aloud every 4th of July, and then that says that secession is not so. You might try actually reading that document that you profess to love. Uh, what a great writer. Ryan McMagna. i got to remember that name. Last thing I want to read from it. The Declaration makes a simple argument. Humans have rights from the Creator. Two, governments exist to secure those rights, a debatable assertion, but we'll roll with it, he writes. And three, when the government fails to secure those rights, we can ditch it and start our own government. Now, I've given you my opinion on it. I have given you the opinion of a very well-written article. And now I'm going to give you 22 reasons why we're talking about seceding from the Union. With any seriousness whatsoever. Because, let's face it, on a scale of 1 to 10, negative 10, that it's going to happen. Like, in the next foreseeable time. But it's approaching if we keep dividing ourselves as we have allowed the government to do. Rewind that, listen to it again, it's the best sentence I'll say all night. Before I get into this, um, there are two things you got to know. First of all, there are like sub-articles in this, and I'm not going to read them all. So you are going to want to go to The American Dream, Mike Snyder, The American Dream, and look up 22 reasons that voter fraud is wildly out of control and the election is a sham. End quote. All the facts to back this up are in it. Oh, look what I just did. Hey, I'm back. All the facts to back this up are in it. So don't say that they're not backed up because I'm not going to read all of that, but I am going to read all 22 reasons. Second of all, this is not about Romney. I did not vote for Romney, and I don't think the country would be that much better off with him than Obama anyway. It's also not about Johnson, beyond the fact that if they lied about votes, it may have taken some of Johnson's numbers down, which matters for his federal matching funds in 2016. 
But I don't necessarily think that he was uh, cheated in that way, as in terms of becoming president. But it could have messed up his matching funds. Remember, in Ohio, he dropped from uh, almost 10% in the polls to getting 1% of the votes. So it does make you wonder there. But this is not about Romney. For me, this is about 2016. Because my guy, Ron Paul, and my other guy, Gary Johnson, for whatever reason, never came close to the White House. So... If these things are allowed to go on, whether you voted for Obama or Romney or third party as I did, if these things are allowed to go on, it might be your guy or our guy that is cheated in 2016. So listen to these. Pay attention. This is not raw sour grapes for Romney or Obama. It's bigger than that. Use the thinking part of your brain. All right, real quick, I'm going to give you all 22, and I'm going to shoot right through them. I'm not going to be able to do all the shows I wanted, all the articles I wanted to tonight. But I think that I have done these ones well, and that's what matters. Um, according to the Election Protection Coalition, voters across the United States reported more than 70,000 voting problems from 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Election Day. There, two, there were 59 voting divisions in the city of Philadelphia. Mitt Romney did not receive a single vote. In those voting divisions, the combined vote toll was 19,605 for Barack Obama and zero for Mitt Romney. You mean to tell me that nobody, nobody in any of, the 59, any of those 59 voting divisions in Philadelphia voted for Mitt Romney? Um, anybody that did, leave a comment. I see voter fraud here. Three, the overall voter turnout rate in Philadelphia was only 60%, but in the areas of Philadelphia where Republican poll watchers were illegally removed, the voter turnout was over 90%, and Obama received over 99% of the vote. Officials in Philadelphia have already ruled out an investigation. Why? Because they know there's criminal activity there, that's why. Four, according to WND, one poll watcher in Pennsylvania actually claims that he witnessed voting machine software repeatedly switching votes from Mitt Romney to Barack Obama, and then has a long paragraph on it. Five, somehow Mitt Romney won 55 out of 67 counties in the state of Pennsylvania, but still managed to lose the entire state by a wide margin because of the absurd vote totals that Obama ran up in the urban areas. Six, Barack Obama received more than 98% of the vote in 10 out of the 50 wards in the city of Chicago. That seems a bit odd. Oh, he's from there, where Gary Johnson's from New Mexico. And uh, Romney's from Massachusetts. And they didn't get 98%. Johnson got three. A little over three, 3.5. Seven, prior to the election, voters in the states of Nevada, North Carolina, Texas, and Ohio all reported that voting machines were switching their votes from Romney over to Obama. Oh, but it happens on both sides. Oh, no, it doesn't. Nobody reported it going over the other way. Eee, dummy. Um, eight, there were more than 50 precincts in Cuyahoga County where Mitt Romney received two votes or less. There were more than 100 precincts in Cuyahoga County, Ohio, where Barack Obama received more than 99 times the votes that Mitt Romney did. Guys, I live in the cesspool that is Ohio. Obama had more signs than Romney in some areas, and a lot less in others. My point being that even if Obama had gotten it, it wasn't by 99% of the vote. It's absolutely impossible! I live right down the freeway from Cuyahoga Falls. Listen to me. Wood County, Ohio, which Obama won, was a voting age, has a voting age population of 98,213. But somehow, 106,258 voters were registered to vote on Election Day. Twelve, ten counties in the swing state of Colorado have a voter registration more than 100%. I had somebody at work, well-meaning guy, I'm sure of it, was insisting that this happens on both sides. The, why did it not happen once for Romney? Why did it not happen once for Virgil Good, Gary Johnson, Roseanne Barr? I mean, if these are set for a default, why did Virgil Good not get a default? 
kind of interesting. Uh, the theory being that if you didn't vote for one, it defaulted to Obama. And that's not what happens when someone doesn't vote. But they defaulted it there. Uh, 13, Barack Obama did not win in a single state that absolutely requires photo ID in order to vote. Repeat, Barack Obama did not win in a single state that absolutely requires a photo ID in order to vote. In Ohio, two election judges were caught allowing unregistered voters to cast ballots. That was 14. 15, many Ohio voters that showed up at the polls on election day were surprised when they were informed that they had already voted. Um, 17, according to the House of, Represent House of Representatives Allen West, there are numerous voting irregularities in St. Lucie County, Florida on election day. I will let you read that. It's a whole paragraph. 18. In Wisconsin, there were allegations that Obama voters were actually being bussed in, in the, from out of state. And you want to read this. It is number 18. It is a, it's, it's a whole story in and of itself. And it describes wi women dressed in Chicago Bears attire with Chicago Bear logo on their fake nails talking about needing to catch a bus back to Chicago. And it is is in Wisconsin. Does the election matter to you? Not Romney, not Obama, I'm not sticking up for Romney. If this doesn't matter to you, there's something wrong with you, and God forbid it may happen to your candidate in four years. And Romney was not my candidate. Paul and Johnson were. 19. Prior to Election Day, an Obama for America staffer was caught on video trying to help someone register to vote more than one state. 20. It is being alleged that the unions in Nevada have been registering illegal immigrants and pursuing them to vote. 21. According to townhall.com, there was a systematic effort by the Obama campaign to suppress the military vote because they knew that most military votes would go to Obama. How bad is it? Um, in Ohio, more than 20,000 fewer overseas military voters uh, requested even having mallets. Um, and it, read the paragraph. Suffice to say, there's more voter fraud going on with the people that are fighting for our country. And whether or not you're in favor of the wars or not is irrelevant. These people don't have much of a say in it. 22 and last, according to the Naval Enlisted Reserve Association, it appears that Thousands of military votes from this election will never be counted at all. Ever. Thousands. That matters when you realize that when you add all that together, you had a much closer election than the 3% that I think Obama won by. And this is bad, people. This is very, very bad. And if you voted for Obama and you're happy about this, there's something wrong with you. And I have been in your shoes. Um, I liked Bush over Gore. I proudly voted Libertarian in that election. But left to my own devices, I liked Bush over Gore. And I sided with Gore. So I have been put in this situation before, and I did what I think the right thing is, and I spoke out for Gore, who I politically detest, but it was correct. And you are listening to The Correct Views, brought to you by the Arcadia Grill, absolutely delicious food at a fair price on Court Avenue in downtown Canton, the Arcadia Grill. Please donate to the show if you can. I'm trying to get a laptop so that I can bring my graphics back. Good night, friends. God bless.